Well, the protest uh, that came here to be the counter demonstration, that's the pro migration anti fascist demonstration, has now ended. And the uh, anti immigration demonstration that was uh, planned for 11.30 down on the seafront just never got started at all, apart from three or four people, which I'll tell you about in a moment. In fact, you can see the square behind me is Market Square. That had about 70 people uh, demonstrating against fascism uh, earlier on. They had to stop at midday to let that young woman start singing, uh, which seems a little bit strange. There's sort of 50, 60, 70 people down here uh, all uh, protesting, uh, chanting whose streets, our streets. They went on a little walk around here as well. Blocked this road, uh, blocked all the traffic. When you've got a perfectly good uh, pavement here, arguably, they could have been uh, walking down. But they did a bit of a protest and then it all seemed to sort of uh, fizzle uh, to an end. But I spoke to one of the protesters who uh, told me that he came to uh, England in 1999 in the back of a lorry, Aram Rauf. Uh, this is uh, what he had to say to me. I had mixed, mixed, feel, mixed uh, experience. Some people have been very welcoming. Uh, in the beginning when I arrived, they even tried to teach me Cockney words. I wasn't like a, uh, able to put two English sentences together, but I was going around telling people kushti or saying lovely jubbly. And you built a life here? I built a life in here. And I'm from that positivity. But there were also uh, people uh, actually threatened to cut my head off. There were uh, people also told me many times, go back to your own country. Even now, people, when I speak up uh, uh, to tell people my experience or how sometimes a, a, a terminology is going cross in a wrong way. They tell me you're, you're, you're a guest in our country. Well, I'm not a guest. I'm a proud British person and I'm proud of the British values. British citizen. I'm a British citizen and I'm proud. So he was stressing that he has been broadly welcomed since he arrived here in the United Kingdom and he was agreeing that sometimes the use of terms like fascist, like Nazi, uh, which some of the protesters were using today, can be quite divisive for those people who do have uh, genuine concerns about um, illegal immigration, uh, the effects of migration, uh, and want to attend some of these events but certainly would not consider themselves to be racist in any way, shape or form. So the event kind of ended or started to end around 12, but a younger group of protesters were determined to go and kind of find some people to protest to. And so they headed down to the seafront. Eventually, they found a group of uh, five or six people uh, stood there with uh, the union uh, flag uh, and started uh, crowding around them. The police had to intervene and block them from getting access to them. I spoke to uh, those uh, people who were there with the flags. This is what they had to say calling me a racist and they're calling me a fascist and a Nazi. I'm just British. In my country, holding my Union Jack, looking out for my children and grandchildren, whom I've got three of. <laughs> I love my country and then I want our future, you know, our kids to have something to, you know, have something, you know. When they, when they grow up, you know, they, I don't want them to inherit something that's, you know, will be dangerous for them in the future. They'll have no, no facilities to use, you know, they don't get a doctor's appointment. And, uh, you know, the grooming gangs are out of control as well. They're quite aggressive, um, and I've come across this on a few occasions. I've come down here just really so I can actually see what the reaction is. There must be 50 police here now protecting four of us. It's um, because they want to attack us, and yet we're the ones that are being called the aggressors. We're the ones that are be called, being called the fascists and the racists, and we're anything but. Far right, I mean, what is far right today? You know, you're either far left or you're far right. There's no middle ground anymore. Well, we've got all this lot here. None of them are waving the English flag. They obviously don't support England. They keep saying immigrants welcome. Where are they gonna put them? Are they gonna house them? I bet you ask every one of them, not one of them will take one in. So perhaps that sums it up from that gentleman there. You're either far left or you're far right. It seems that things are very split at the moment, but not much going on down here, Dawn. It all kind of fizzled out into nothing. I'm going to speak to the former uh, yes, Chief of Immigration Officer of the UK Border Force, Kevin Saunders, to get uh, his views on that as well. Kevin, thank you very much for joining me. Uh, so we, we are dealing with most of this protest. The narrative is clearly uh, around immigration. Um, what are your thoughts with regard to the way these particular things, these, these protests are being policed? Oh, dear me. Um, 
I, I don't think there should be any any demonstrations at all. Um, I, my view is that the government should put a complete ban on on immigration. Uh, oh, sorry, on on protests at the moment because it's just turning into riots, and we can't have riots. Whatever the issues, we can't have people rioting, smashing up shops, stealing, and what have you. Look at the amount of time that we've had to spend over the last couple of weeks with trials, sending all these people to prison and what have you. No, if there was a complete ban on riot on uh, demonstrations for, say, a month, um, it, it would uh, hopefully take the sting out of everything. Well, what about freedom of speech, Kevin? You can't... I mean, we're not in a dictatorship where you can stop people from talking. Surely this should be allowed, but the police need to be able to cope. Why can't the police cope? Well, I agree with you. We, we should be allow, allowed to demonstrate, but we should be allowed to demonstrate peacefully, and we're not demonstrating peacefully. Therefore, we have to ba ban them. I'm not saying we ban them forever and a day. I would just ban them for a month just to take the sting out of things and say, you can't have any, any riots or, I can't, sorry, you can't have any protests on, on anything for the next month. But, you, you, um, but and, that, and that's impossible. I, I don't see how you're going to stop that. If right. you've got a lot of people on the streets there, I, I just don't see how that, that would even be... How, that, I don't even see how that could work. If a load of people get out there and start demonstrating, what, what, what then? You, you, it won't work, and then you'll look like you've got no power. Well, you, you might be right there, but, I, I mean, I, I don't like to go outside the house now just in case I bump into a, into a you know... A, a riot or something like that. Um, it, it's not right what we're, what's going on. Um, we shouldn't be, it shouldn't be happening in the United Kingdom. We are not a country where where we should have this sort of thing. And the riots aren't about an issue. They're about criminality, as we saw the other day um, with uh, people smashing down uh, shoe shops and stealing trainers. And in, in Hull... <laughs> We saw that man going into a, a shop stealing beauty products and then giving them away. It's, it's nothing to do with immigration. It's just pure criminality. Mm. Well, well, with a lot of these people coming to these riots are opportunists, Kevin. That's, that's, that's what that's about. But the issues still remain. Um, very briefly, I've got about 30 seconds with you, Kevin. Um, what, what should Keir Starmer be doing then? It could, because the riots are happening, he can't stop them, or, or the protests even. You're saying ban protests. That's not going to work. What do you no. think Keir Starmer should be doing? Well, perhaps he ought to be making a more effort to stop the boats. I mean, that that's what that's the big problem. Mm. If we could stop the boats completely, then um, the problem probably would would go away. Mm. Um, but uh, we're we're not stopping the boats. Although I have to say, still no crossings yesterday or today, which is a good sign. Mm. But I do understand that the problem is actually boats. Um, yeah. they, the smugglers are having difficulty getting boats. Well, listen, Kevin, it's been really good to talk to you. Thank you so much. He's the former Chief Immigration Officer for the UK Border Force. Yes, perhaps Keir Starmer could address the situation of the boats. Uh, joining me now, Ivor Kaplan and also Lee Harris. Uh, you, you, were, you were saying... Uh, I, I was just about to say, and listening to what Kevin was saying there, I mean, it's impossible just to stop um, demonstrations right. or anything like that. What we've got to do, I think, is to manage it properly and we've got to be able to have the policing that we need to make sure these things happen. That's what I was just saying about what we saw previously in relation to anti-Semitic behaviour um, in, in London. I think that there are lots of good things going on in different parts of the country, and the problem when things just happen in London is that everyone thinks that must be it. Um, so... In some ways, we need to get to a point where the policing matches what people think is the right thing to do. And I think that's where we need to try and get to. Lee Harris. I think it's getting much worse. And I think the, the situation from a public perspective is getting worse too, because we're looking at, just as we were talking a moment ago, every single weekend for months we had hate marches calling for intifada, genocidal chanting, violent mm. calls for jihad, open support for terrorists. And I think they, uh, there was a recent case um, of a Sutton man, 61, I've got the headline in front of me, who chanted, um, I won't obviously repeat it, um, something, uh, who the um, is Allah, 
and he was jailed for 18 months. Well, what months. about the ones that were supposed to be supporting the Houthis about the boats? Exactly. <laughs> mm. uh, and, and at the time... Oh, sorry, at, at the time when we had the... Um, at the time that we had the demonstrations for the anti-Israel protest, we had the Met defending the use of the word jihad. And the point I was trying to make is, is the public perception of fairness is being eroded. And that is not good. It's not going to end well. Well, OK, thank you for that, Lee Harris and Kevin Saunders. Uh, 